What is the difference in the way that we deal with fallouts and how often do these happen? Meaning when you fall out with somebody, when you fall out with a friend, you fall out with a relation. What is the root of why we fall out with each other? Now, whether you're going through a spiritual awakening or not, we fall out with each other primarily because everything that happened on the outside does not meet our expectations and because of our projection. If we are falling out more often than not, and if we are falling out and we think that somebody has crossed our boundary, even then, more than the trigger, it is about us. You see, life is going to happen anyway. So what we're attracting to ourselves is anything that's got the potential of creating a trigger hard enough for us to go back, look within, to then return to wholeness and to heal it. Because the triggers are not there for us to live a life on edge. No, we don't need to live like that. We can literally live a life that is quite... Um, not that much emotionally draining. So when you are going through an awakening, your pain body is right on top. Your pain body at the beginning is up there. And so you will take, you know, you'll, you'll go through other relationships, you'll leave other people, you'll stay with some people and you'll find a new tribe because your vibe has changed right? Now, a person who's not gone through an awakening will pretty much remain in that vibe. They're pretty much going through the same pattern nonstop. Now, as you're awakening, as long as you can shift things inside of yourself, the patterns won't be repeating. Now, if the pattern is repeating, it's basically that we need to go back into ourselves and stop the idea or the habit that what's happening to me is happening because so-and-so said something. No, but in fact, there is hardly anything that we can put to another person outside of us as the one responsible for our emotion, our feeling, our reaction, our response, because that response or reaction or feeling is what is creating the impression, which is our karma, which is a result of conditioned existence. When we don't have a conditioned existence, we don't have any conditions that are limiting the way the self perceives itself in everything, right? Then we have our blinkers on. We have our blinkers on of all those experiences we had that our mind decided to limit us with when we are not the mind, we are not the take of the mind to us. So every time we check in with us and we realize, okay, I'm not the mind, this is not really happening, right? It is so easy for us to react in the same old way and say, oh, you know what, people here are always like this, or you know what, this is always going to be like this. No, this is the way they are. This is just the way they are. Now, all of those words that we use and all of these little proclamations that we make throughout the day make a big difference because they tell us exactly where we are right now. Now, the difference between someone who's awakening and someone who's not, you will carry on being in that spiral. But there's an overlap. Because when you're awakening, you will still carry on being in that loop, carry on being in the spiral as long as there's resistance, rigidity, and overwhelm. Yeah? When we are resisting, again, it's the petty sense of self, it's the petty sense of the mind that is saying, no, 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 no. No, it really isn't that great out there. The way we are right now in this limited perception, it's comfortable, it's cozy, so we're going to stay in this. Right? Now, because there's been a paradigm shift of consciousness, the person who's going through the awakening will literally have to come out of this. And so they'll be, you won't carry on in that spiral. But the person who's not will be in that spiral. But eventually, guys, this is very important. Because of the complexity 
of our humanness or our human condition, we will always come back to a point of whole because we were whole to begin with. And whatever happens in between literally vanishes because and we will be whole at the end. We will remain whole. That hasn't changed. So you see all this interval in between whole and whole is a mirage is a mirage that feels so real, right? It feels so real and it will remain that real until we experience a profound kundalini awakening that will assist in transcending until we get to a point where we are now perceiving the world and perceiving us in everything through the third eye, through the command center. This is when you can experience life in all its totality. You don't need to consult with anything or anyone about what you should do. You just know. You can interpret dreams. You can look around and you have all of your answers. We fall out with each other because the other doesn't meet our projection. The other doesn't meet our expectation and whatever they have done or not done is down to our projection. Most of the time, people are behaving just as they do, right? And you will find that underlying everyone is a sense of goodness or a sense of, shall we say, wholeness, a sense of we are spirit, we are one. It, it is underlying all of us, right? But we get stuck, we get lost in translation in the middle. In the middle, we get lost. So you as a person who is now undergoing this amazing transformation, your job is just one, to keep with it, keep up with it and keep going. Make yourself uncomfortable as far as the triggers are concerned. Get rid of all the coping mechanisms. Make it really tough on you and then you rise. And obviously, if you've got problems, then consult advice. But when we are compressed, what we need is decompression. But instead of decompression, if we get even more compressed, it causes an awakening. Right? And this is where a lot of people coping with trauma end up with profound awakenings. But what they do with that awakening is a different story and it's a different post. Till now, guys, remember, when we fall out, we choose to fall out. When we fall out, make it your decision that you fell out based on your own projections, your own take on this. Not about the other person, not about what somebody else did, but it's what we choose to make of what happened. Right? It's what we choose. We can choose whatever we want out of it. And I know that there are some situations that we can't even imagine to choose. Or we think, no, this is just downright not right. It's my boundaries. It's my boundary. What boundary? What boundary do we need? What boundary do you need when you are acting out of your wholeness? What boundary does one need when they are fully awake? There are no boundaries, right? That is, again, unfortunately, one of those things that has come with the age of empowerment, that we empower our mind more with all this, but our spirit kind of goes down. So... Take care of yourself, take care of yourself, look after yourself, happy awakening and take care.